Hello, Dota 2 fans! This is Chicago Ted casting for you another Reddit Dota 2 League game, this time between Pro Pain and Big Meat Squad. So, without further ado, let's get right onto this game. I'm casting tonight with my statsman, Sir Rabbit Koala. He's going to be joining me, dropping down the stats wherever possible, correcting me when I'm wrong, and just keeping things interesting when I can. Which is pretty hard for me to do because I always keep things interesting, eh? Alright, so, into this draft, we have first bans out for Pearl Pain, Bat Rider, and uh, Outer World Devourer. Two very good mids, two very hard to shut down mids, and mids that can snowball very hard in the right hands, and given the right situation. Outer World Devourer, one of the most impossible Five mids to fight to against, because he pretty much shuts down any real conventional mid. Not He's to mention any intelligence-based mid can just, like, cry in a corner when he's again on the other side of the river, but Batrider in and of himself also shuts down lots of mids. It's his, he's able to stack up those extra damage uh, sticky napalms up and just make your laning phase Radiant absolute team. hell. The bands out from Big Meat Squad are the Visage and the Lifesteal. The Lifesteal is a bit of a respect ban as Lifesteal was one of the reasons they were stayed in the game in the last game. I had the preview up for... I was not able to cast game one. This is indeed game two, but... The Life Stealer was a big player in keeping them in the game and keeping things relatively even, so banning out the uh, Life Stealer, getting rid of their chance to do that, and Visage, a very good support tri lane. So kicking a few out, um, taking a few options out for them. Propane gonna start off with the Alchemist, the hero that Big Meat Squad used to absolutely rip through the, uh, Propane's uh, lineup last game. So they're turning it around on them, and hopefully it's gonna work out for them. We'll have to see, wait and see. The game, the series Five is one up on Meat Big Meat Squad. Nature's Prophet going to be the first pick out for Big Meat Squad. We got some good, uh, good map control. Very nice, uh, very nice mobility and can just be anywhere he wants to be. Paired up with a Wisp, you have a mobile ganking party that soars through the roof. Lashrak is the second pick up. A good tri lane hero. Very nice stun, and we're all ready right now. We see two very good pushers out for a big meat squad. Nature's Prophet able to summon up his little nature's attendants, while Leshrac, with his Diabolic Edict, can really put the pressure on the towers. And I wouldn't be surprised to see a tier 1 go down within the first two minutes, maybe the first three minutes of this game, with this kind of lineup. Even versus an Alchemist, you are kind of giving up the very early game, and... Five sacrificing that for your late game prowess. With Alchemist, the uh, late game comes a little bit earlier with Grievel's Greed, but Reserve still, time. defending towers is not as easy unless you get a counter push hero like, say, Keeper of the Light. But we're just gonna have to wait and see what they go with here. Already on the second pick for Propane and waiting to see what they pick up. They have the Alchemist, so they could start working on the makings of a tri lane or they can go with their mid slash off laner right now or they could just put alchemist in a dual lane do a two uh, uh an off laner a mid jungler dual lane but of course when you have one pick up it's not totally uh totally set in stone what you're doing and it leaves many things up to interpretation so we're just gonna wait on their second pick coming out right here again this is game two of a best of two series, week four of the Reddit Dota 2 League between Big Meat Squad and Propane. Big Meat Squad is already one up in this series. Propane, gonna go with the Rubik. Either a mid laner or a, or a. In past experience, I imagine he's going to be sitting comfortably in that tri lane. And already some pretty good spells for him to steal. The Diapox Edict isn't too bad if you want a little bit of counter push. The Split Earth is a great Ten stun, and if you steal the Split Earth, then you can have your own follow-up stun for your uh, for your Five telekinesis. Just pick him up, put him down, Split Earth, Dia and then you've got the Alchemist beating out, their si beating out their sides, and within a couple of seconds, you have a dead hero anywhere. Dragonite. Starting out the second band phase with the puck on the opposite Radiant side, so taking out some mid heroes that you don't want to fight against. Dragonite, a fairly decent mid hero, also fairly good in the late game, a good tank, able to deal with the Alchemist's harass, and overall able to fight the Alchemist rather well when it comes into the limit game. There have been cases where teams like DK remain. actually run the uh, Dragonite and the Alchemist and run Five sort of a triple core remain. lineup, but of course you don't always have to do that. And Dragon Knight is one of those heroes He's that can put a thorn in the side of Alchemist. With his level 3 Elder Dragon form, can slow down the Alchemist, 
and just kind of make it hard for the Alchemist to be really mobile in team fights. As that is one of the main problems with this carry. And one of the main reasons why carries like uh, like Anti Mage really excel against them. Puck is going to be the ban out for Big Meat Squad. In response to that, a good mid hero, typically a good initiator, and is still very good with global lineups that include heroes like Nature's Prophet. As well as going with hard carries like Alchemist and Rubik, able to really force those team fights and counter the split push. So I wouldn't be surprised if we saw some heavy split push coming out from Big Meat Squad in the form of an Anti Mage or a Spectre. Shadow Demon, gonna be Propane's ban out. A strong tri laner uh, sets up Leshrac stun rather well, so just kind of removing that uh, that possibility for an offensive tri lane against the Alchemist, which, if the Alchemist gets uh, shut down earlier on in the game, could mean that you do uh, that you do poorly in the later game, which is probably what their thought process is here. Naga Siren, gonna be the ban out. Great initiate, great a counter initiate. And overall, I mean, does very well against split pushing lineups, so. Smart of Big Meat Squad to take her out at this point in the game. Ten so, right now, remaining. we see a late game, heavy late game Five focused uh, lineup out of Propane. The Alchemist and the Rubik, makings of the tri lane, is going to be able to uh, pull together and really put out the damage in the later game, whereas Big Meat Squad are going for the uh, split push. And they're actually going to pick up the Nyx Assassin, either in the off lane, the mid lane, or to follow to uh, sit in the tri lane with Leshrac. So, really, any possibility coming out of Big Meat Squad in terms of a carry and a mid laner. Unless they want to run the Leshrac in a dual lane with another carry, have the Nyx Assassin sit in the off lane, Nature's Prophet in the jungle, then pick up a solo mid hero. Darkseer. Coming out on Propane, a great offlaner, able to find farm in the hardest places and get it not so uh not so good at getting experience in lane as he pushes the wave pretty handily past tower and makes it hard for him to get up, especially with the uh with a strong tri lane able to shut him down, but of course. Money is the important thing with this hero. Ten seconds Until remaining. he gets walls, then Level 16 is very, uh, very nice on Five the hero. Seconds remaining. That is a 90% damage output. So if you uh, catch a very hard late game He's carry in that time. wall, they're going to be outputting 90% of the damage, which is pretty huge. With Agatham Scepter, it's upgraded to about 150, if I remember correctly. And when facing heroes like Tiny, that is a very, very nice thing to have. So... Coming up into the pick phase, we have three heroes out on each side, and still a very, uh, very clear set of strategies here. Again, Big Meat Squad going for those pickoffs and going for the real tower pushing lineup, whereas Propane focusing on their team fight prowess. With propane, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be surprised to see a hero like a Jakiro or a Magnus, out of them, maybe even both, coming out on this uh, on this team. Both do very well when set up with the vacuum, and can output lots of damage. And when you have an alchemist, I mean a uh, a Magnus, putting the empower on the alchemist is absolutely huge, giving him that that 50% cleave plus the bonus damage just shreds through enemy team lineups. Especially if they're pushed together with the uh, vacuum and the morphling getting picked out for Big Meat Squad. Not a hero we see too often, but definitely one that's fun to watch. A very, very strong laner as he uh, gets levels and starts getting damage up. His waveform can do ample amount of damage in the early game. And really, he's just able to be anywhere on the map he needs to be with his ultimate. And with heroes like Nature's Ten Prophet, that is huge. Queen, Queen of Pain of being picked up by Pro Pain. So adding to that burst back. damage, adding to that real DPS potential of this team. And right now, we see three intelligence heroes out on Pro Pain plus the strength hero. Not really sure if that makes any difference. However, it is interesting to note. 
Queen of Pain going to be doing lots of work in this game, hopefully. With the Blink, going to be a very mobile hero to try to counter these split push lineups. Also, with her, Scream of Pain is a fairly good counter push. Reserve time. Final ban phase here. Starting out with Big Meat Squad, we're just going to see what they ban up. Last and. I wouldn't be surprised they ban up a tri laning here, and they do. They pick Radiant off the Crystal team. Maiden, a great early game tri lane. Able to get this rack up the kills in the early game to try to push the uh, push the potential of the team throughout the late game. And can end up being fairly tanky if built right, and has plenty of damage. So, Ten seconds remaining. Also, can jungle effectively if need be. Five Propane, remaining. probably want to ban out a uh, strong mid or off solo off laner. In this final ban phase, as we see the makings of the lanes, the Nyx Assassin probably going to be solo laning out. They pick off the Viper. A very good hero versus melee heroes. Melee auto attackers. So, with an Alchemist out, with a Darkseer out, a smart pick up. Or pick off, rather. Coming into the final pick phase of both teams, we see Big Meat Squad and needing to pick up either another solo laner. Or finish out their... Well, actually, yeah. They're definitely going to need to pick up a solo laner. Meanwhile, Ten Propane need to finish up their tri lane. So it's all up to them for what they remain. do. And game two. Winner takes all. Or winner takes the points, rather. Time. Weaver. And they go with the Weaver pickup. Radiant Another pick fairly good independent hero can split push effectively. Puts plenty of damage on towers. We're just going to see, we're hopefully going to see some good rat dota out of this team. Meanwhile, Propane looking to shrack out in the team fights and really put the hurt on in terms of magical damage as well as physical damage out from the Alchemist. It's all Ten up to them to see what they pick up next. Again, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a uh, Jakiro pickup from this team. A f very nice with the Darkseer. And also, it is a fairly seconds. good tri laner. But they go with the Bounty Hunter. Well, this throws a curveball at me. So it looks like Queen of Pain is going to take the mid. The Bounty Hunter is going to sit in the off lane. Darkseer going to be jungling with the Rubik and the Alchemist sitting in lane. Meanwhile, Big Meat Squad, Morphling, and Leshrac definitely laying together. Weaver in the off lane. Nyx Assassin in the mid lane. And Nature's Prophet in the jungle. Holla holla, get dollying. So. We're just going to wait on the teams picking up their heroes, and then we're going to introduce the teams for this Game 2 of the Best of 2 series. So here we go, let's, uh, let's introduce the teams here for what looks to be Propane. No, for Big Me Squad, we've got Burritos playing the Nyx Assassin Elite on the Leshrac, Big At on the Morphling, Mr. Struzor, the stand-in on, uh, on the Weaver. And LPNF playing the Nature's Prophet. Meanwhile, on Propane, we have Fiend, Alchemist. We have Hank Hill on the Rubik. We have Jonah with the Darkseer, Birkendog blinking on the Queen of Pain, and Saf getting Dala on the Bounty Hunter. We see four heroes rota rotating bottom for Propane. But the trees are going to scout them out. They do know where this team is. And right now, both teams have a 3-0 and for their, uh, for their league. So one team is going to have to drop a win, and one team is going to come out ahead in this series. And it all hangs in the balance here. They do dispose of the trees rather efficiently. The jungle is up to them. No camps being blocked just yet. No more trees on route. And we see three heroes the in the bottom lane. Nyx Assassin going to find the Rubik, but not too much. He gets picked up and put down. And the Nyx Assassin on the high ground here. He does have tangos. He's going to tangle right on out of there. And they're going to be able to surround the Rubik. One more stun. The Impale comes out. The Splitter does land. And just a few auto attacks down, and that's going to be first blood going the way of Burritos on the Nyx Assassin. One game up in the league, and already picking up first blood for them. It looks to be a tri-lane in the bottom lane. Nature's Prophet 
going to be off laning in this team game. Alchemist picking up one point up in his unstable concoction. Not going with Grievel's Greed just yet. Realize that's going to be an offensive try lane. Doesn't want to push his luck with the Grievel's Greed and instead is going to go for a stun. Meanwhile, the smoke up. The two heroes are on the move. They're going to find Darkseer. The Impale out. The Split Earth to fall. But he's just so damn tanky at level one. He's not going to be able He's not going to drop here. The Impale is up again in three seconds. There is another Split Earth to follow up with the Rubik coming out. They can easily turn around the Split Earth. Barely missing, and both are going to get away. A bit of miscommunication on Big Meat Squad's part. They probably could have turned it around right on the Rubik instead of going after the Darkseer further, but in they, uh, the Leshrac ends up pursuing the Darkseer, and it looks like they're going to move around. They're going to catch out Shadow. They're going to catch out Fiend here. He doesn't see them quite yet. The Impale could land, but no. The Nyx Assassin isn't going to hit the Impale, and instead, both supports. Are gonna walk away. The alchemist is safe for another day. Meanwhile, in mid, we have Burke and Dog on the Queen of Pain. Just throwing out a few auto attacks. It looks to be at Struzer. Struzer, bite and back. No real winner in this lane. Five and two for the Queen of Pain. Four and two for the Weaver. Standing relatively close. NCS. Looks like Sap. Trying to hold his own in the lane. Nature's Prophet doing rather well. Finding his XP. Finding his farm. Sitting 8-2 and two in this lane. 7-1. and one On the, uh... On the Bounty Hunter. And Fiend looks to try to get a, a few auto attacks on. But gets picked up. Put down by the Rubik. Telekinesis keeping him out for a little bit. And Fiend is going to walk right away. Probably couldn't have netted anything. Even if he had gotten that hit off. Might not have meant much more than about 30 extra damage out on Fiend. In the jungle... Darkseer, doing what he can, stacking the camps up. He does have Ion Shell up. He can just put it on one of those creeps and he'll be able to take out all the little ones. Fiend, drop down about 200 health. Gonna be sitting in this lane rather careful. Hank Hill gonna be spotted out, walk, uh, trying to deward this camp, but it's on the opposite side of the camp. Birkin Dog trying to get what he can on the Weaver, however, taking a lot of damage himself, so. Still ahead in that lane. Weaver 7-2. Queen of Pain is 15-5 right now. So coming out very high on top is going to pick up the first rune. All lanes sitting relatively quiet. Not too much dedicated aggression. There is first blood still on Big Meat Squad. It's try lane. They can try to put the pressure out on this lane. The pings coming out. They see that the uh, Big Meat Squad supports are rotating around. And they go ahead and they reward the camp. With the full camp blocked, it is very difficult for this alchemist to find farm. In fact, realizing this, he hasn't gone any in Grievel's Greed. He's going for the defensive uh, unstable concoction. Supports are rotating mid. There are wards out, though. But not. For the radiant side, so they can't see those supports rotating in if there ends up being prom fiend down at 280 health. Does have tangos healing himself up, but the supports coming right on in. It looks like bounty hunter sitting right behind the nature's prophet. Gonna get a Janata strike just to pick off the uh, the siege creep. But telekinesis out on burritos. This dual lane should not be getting too aggressive. Looks to be just a defensive telekinesis here, keeping the alchemist alive another day. Alchemist finding almost zero farm in this lane. Can only hope to try to get kills, which is why he's going up in his ass to spray Innocent's unstable concoction, trying to put out a lot of damage in the early game and stop any real aggression coming out in his lane. Still, with the Leshrac on the field, not a single tower has fallen quite yet in this game. It looks like the line being drawn. They do want to go ahead and they want to pick off this uh, Alchemist again. Here comes the uh, the Nyx Assassin coming in from behind. There are no real wards up to spot him except for this one, which caught him a little bit. In fact, the pings are out. They know he's there. They just don't know quite where, and the Rubik is going to spot him out. But they're just going to trade punches here. No one really able to find the kill. Meanwhile, Weaver doing what he can in the mid lane, still falling way behind on CS. Almost 10 CS, or 10 last hits behind 15 CS.
in total behind. Level 6 is up on the Bounty Hunter, so he can try to rotate and gank whenever he needs to. In fact, a few tracks on this bottom lane can pick this uh, Alchemist right back on up to speed. And he's going to pick up Boots first, probably going to look for an early treads maybe into a Shadow Blade. Usually what Alchemists do when they skip the uh, Hand of Midas, which almost certainly is the case. Things coming out, they're making sure he isn't cliff jungling. We're at rather... Beat. I don't know what the pings are doing for, but Weaver does pick up the rune. Queen of Pain may be in a little trouble, but it is an invisibility rune, which doesn't entirely help the Weaver too much. Fiend. Finding some last hits here and there, but it looks like two heroes rotating up to the top to try to get this, uh, get the Nature's Prophet. The Ion Shell and the invisibility. Nature's Prophet knows something up. He's gonna go in on the, uh, Darkseer, however, getting caught out a little bit behind. Nix Assassin picking up the Queen of Pain in the mid lane. Wall, they do get the track gold on the top. Queen of Pain though is able to get the return kill. So three heroes rotating into the mid lane to try to pick up the Queen of Pain. The tree Queen of Pain does get a return kill. Two and two at seven minutes between Pro Pain and Big Meat Squad. And with both supports out of lane, Alchemist can find a little bit of farm. In fact, here comes the Bounty Hunter. They want to try to get this uh, Morphling, as he is getting fairly decent farm, saying 24 and 15. Telekinesis isn't out. Morphling suspects something up. In fact, they do have the rune here, so they did see the Bounty Hunter. Nice. Rather, they have the ward here. Bounty Hunter, the jig is up, man. You're not going to get anything by standing there. You should probably go try to find some farm. Ping's coming out from the dire side, so they know full well that he's trying to gank him. The ward does go down, so they don't know when he leaves, but they certainly know he's there. And they're sitting by tower, just playing it safe. Meanwhile, Queen of Pain continuing to sit atop the CS board. We look at the Golden XP right now, and we see the Golden XP sitting about 1,000 in the same way, and that's towards pro pain despite their tri lane being a, or their, their lane being a bit at a disadvantage against big meat squad they are finding farm in the top lane they are finding farm in the mid lane the queen of pain leading the cs board for them Dyer's middle tower is under attack. and dual lanes do naturally gain more xp than uh than tri lanes and with the rotations in to pick up the telekinesis out and it looks like the unstable concoction, the uh, bounty hunter is still there, and they are going to pick up the Nyx Assassin. That was a track kill. They ended up picking up the Leshrac as well, and the Morphling next to fall. No, is able to waveform out. The Weaver coming in is going to try to pick up hand kill and does. And it looks like the time lapse out. He tastes blood. Does he want any more? The track out on the Weaver. The time lapse is already used. He can't get any more. In fact, the Morphling taking some damage from the Queen of Pain does not have his ultimate up just yet. In fact, he just gets it, pops right on in, but can't get it off just yet. Not enough mana. In fact, here comes the Nyx, and in comes the uh, Weaver, and this is a very dead Queen of Pain. Does not have enough mana for a blink, and is gonna fall. I declare a four and four. Four. This nine-minute game, and we look at the Golden XP graphs, and they're certainly gonna fall. Is that Queen of Pain, who was at the top level, does end up falling down? That's a lot of XP and gold towards the enemy team. Meanwhile. At the same time, Big Meat Squad's very own Nature's Prophet rising on the uh, CS board and in fact has taken the lead. Jonah in a bit of a predicament, but really good game sense. He gets on out of there before any real harassment comes up, any real initiation, and he's going to avoid dying right there. Weaver checking the rune up on him, still does have track, so they know full well that he's coming. But they don't feel too threatened about a Weaver, in fact. Quite the opposite. This uh, alchemist still hasn't put a point up in Grievel's Greed. Does not think he uh, can do anything with it at the moment. And it looks like both supports have shifted up to the top lane to keep this Darkseer from getting really uh, anything. Queen of Pain does shift up top. Has her arcane boots, giving a little bit of mana. And Weaver is just going to sit in this lane trying to get some free XP. Meanwhile, top tower taking some early aggressive thing. Aggression. Well, not really early. It is 10 minutes before the tower has fallen against the last track. The track is out. They want him. They get him. Beautiful vacuum right back in. The ultimate kind of wasted in this scenario, but they do pick up the kill without return kill. And that was track. 
Birkin Dog getting a little aggressive, but there is no way, no um, no punishment for that, and he gets away. Meanwhile, Big At on the Morphling pushing down that mid tower. Probably not going to get really any uh, any real damage on that bounty hunter. Going to come right on in. Not able to put too much damage out on the Weaver. As Weaver is very slippery in this scenario until they get a good stun initiation on him, get a sentry ward, and if they can bring him down before the time lapse. Hold on, hold that thought for a minute. They're trying to go in on the Nature's Prophet. The vacuum is a little late, and he ends up teeping away a beautiful impale out from the next assassin. Here comes the wave for him, trying to get them out. The TP out from the Queen of Pain and the Surge from the Dark Seer is going to get them to safety. That was a TP support from the Morphling being wasted. And the Morphling just wasting time in the top lane. Weaver picks up his Power Treads and is going to start working on maybe a BKB or a Lincoln Sphere. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Bean finding last hits where he can. Still doesn't have any Greenwell's Greed. It's going to end up going for a Shadow Blade. Meanwhile, Queen of Pain trying to bring herself back up on the CS board, but is sitting 7 underneath the leader. Fortunately for her, the leader is her own team, and here comes, uh, well, the whole team, really, to take out the, uh, Weaver. And they're able to finish him off, and it looks like that was track. So they do get the bonus gold from that. This is huge for the Alchemist. Bonus gold, able to pick up what he lost without going for Green's Green. He already has a point up now. So he's going to try to get some good farm from this point on. Nature's Prophet rotating in, but nothing really coming out of it. Except for maybe a little bit of a tower defense. Meanwhile, looks like Queen of Pain trying to get the uh, Lesh Rackin ends up getting it with the Screen of Pain. Death comes in at the ears. Looks like Morphling wanting to get a little bit of return aggression out on that, but realized that it wasn't going to amount to anything and ends up backing off in favor of some farm in the top lane. middle tower is under attack. Looks like Weaver coming in, does get Sakuchi out on the uh, Rubik, but Rubik stealing up Scucci. It's going to help him out a little bit. A Scucci into a Telekinesis is one of those things that you always have to worry about. Looks like Nature's Prophet Nature's right. taking out the Queen of Pain. In the mid lane it looks like, so Queen of Pain looked like she didn't really... Uh, Go back to heal and get mana after that engagement with the uh, left track and ended up paying for it with her life. We see three heroes rotating into the mid lane to try to get defense up. The track out on the Weaver. Weaver does have time lapse, so if he really wanted to, he could just time lapse out that track and he'd be safe. Alchemist, one point up in Greenville's Greed is really picking up the pace in his net worth. In fact, we take a look at his net worth and he's already 1,000 ahead of the Nature's Prophet, who is the next highest in the CS board. So even though he's got five last hits ahead of the Alchemist, he is nowhere close to the net worth. And it looks like maybe TPing in? No, he does not. And it's just the uh, Weaver versus the Alchemist in this lane. Both bat and eyelashes at each other. No real damage amounting to anything. Queen of Pain sitting in the top lane, trying to push it out a little bit. The Morphling going to scare her off for a little bit. Meanwhile, Nature's Prophet, finding farm in the jungle, does have his Hand of Midas. But versus Grievel's Greed, the Hand of Midas really does not stack up, as a full level of Grievel's Greed ends up getting a Hand of Midas every few or last hits. Queen of Pain is in a little bit of trouble, the, the uh, Vendetta into the Impale, and that is a very dead Queen of Pain. Nature's Prophet rotating in, doesn't even need it, but instead, they're going to go ahead and push down the tower. They do have Diabolic Edict still up, and four heroes in the mid lane. The ping's coming out, no real heroes in the vicinity to put a strong defense on, but they're going to be uh, play it safe anyways. They do have Trions, they do have Diabolic Edict, this tree, uh, tower could go down with relative ease, but instead... They play it fact, they play it safe. They know they have some late game potential in the form of the Morphling, who is doing very well pushing down towers. Looks like Jonah trying to get some defense on, but I'm not sure how much a uh, anti-mage can do versus a Morphling. Morphling though, pretty sure that it's going to be a lot for him, and he ends up backing off a little bit. 
Meanwhile, in bottom lane, Weaver, again, putting out some aggression on Fiend, but not really amounting to anything. The Weaver, though, picking up the farm, picking up the pace. He was relatively low from that mid lane, getting shut down pretty much by the Queen of Pain. 15 minutes, he doesn't have a piece of his Lincoln Sphere quite yet, so he might just keep going for a BKB this game. The pings out on the bottom lane. There's four Hero Master on the tower. Dyer's Are they looking to push this lane? Attack. There are two to defend it, but it is the Alchemist, and Alchemist is one of the tankier heroes, especially when he pops his, uh, pops his chemical rage. There are no sentry wards. Vendetta out on the uh, Nyx Assassin. He's gonna find out the Ruick. Vendetta taking him down almost all the way. The Impale doing the rest of the damage, and they're gonna go out. He's gonna catch four in his stun. The tracks coming out. The Acid Spray on the all four, but they're gonna back off. No real follow-up damage to you. Bounty Hunter wanting more. Queen of Pain dropping down her ult, missing all of them. Time lapse out from the uh, Weaver, getting tracked up almost immediately. Scream of Pain into the vacuum, bringing down the Weaver. It looks like Burritos next to fall. Meanwhile, Fiend finding out the Nature's Prophet and the Secret Shop. Nyx Assassin, though, to fall. And Big At trying to put some aggression out on this Queen of Pain, who is sitting with a double damage. And the Alchemist gonna push down the bottom tower that four-man stun doing lots of work keeping the aggressive uh, aggression off keeping the fiend alive for a little bit for his team to support in and pretty much winning them that fight as they're able to take down a few heroes while losing only the Rubik and this is gonna most certainly turn to a tower the fortification is popped the top tower is pushing in Support teleporting in in the form of the Weaver coming right back. Queen of Pain doing what she can. The Queen of Pain does catch out the Weaver, doesn't have time lapse out for another six seconds, but it does not matter. Nature's Prophet, meanwhile, pushing in the middle lane. And they're gonna go ahead and back off. Alchemist picking up his Shadow Blade is gonna make him a little bit more of an initiator in this fight. And already we start to see this team fight potential really show itself and we can attribute that to almost all of the early kills being track kills thanks to the bounty hunter and that extra 50 gold or for his allies at level one and 150 for himself really does a lot of work in these fights and getting caught up by a scream of pain there's too much damage and they're able to pick him up that indeed was another track kill giving the bounty hunter plenty of farm Queen of Pain, equally a lot of farm. And Radiant's it looks like Darkseer trying to get some defense on. Pops an Iron Shell on a creep, which is going to push down the wave a little bit. Morphling, though, bursting down any real uh, creeps left to defend. And he's going to sit in. He's going to be doing what he can, but it looks like the, the Alchemist coming in. Got the stun out on the Morphling. The vacuum in. Not really necessary, but picking up the kill. And the Morphling does go down. Meanwhile, Weaver getting himself out of there. And there is a pause out on Darkseer. As there's lag on the uh, on the Alchemist in this game. We're sitting 12 and 7 at 18 minutes of game two between Propane and Big Meat Squad. And that Propane is P-R-O-P-A-I-N. Not, well, what Hank Hill uses to light his grill. Either way, still. <laughs> you got Hank Hill as the avatar. I am off topic, guys. Be a big meat squad is one up in this series. So if Propane can take this game, it goes one and one. Both of them get a tie for this uh, markdown for this game, and both maintain the lead in this uh, in their group. If Big Meat Squad though is able to take the win, that'll make them four and zero, while Propane is three and one, which would put for Big Meat Squad up first in their group. We find the Alchemist come back into the game. And it looks like some... Yep, the Gs are flying. And we're going to go ahead and start this game rather soon. Here we go. Unpausing. 3, 2, 1. Ready to go. Queen of Pain. Coming into the mid lane, gonna catch out the uh, Nyx Assassin. He is standing still. Does he know the game started yet? They pause the game. They know there's something up. <laughs> so 
Someone call 1-800-Merlini in this game. Dendy face, no space, Kappa. Yep, 1-800-CALL-MERLINI. Alright. He lagged out, he's good now. The G's are flying again. And that's not the GG's, no, that's the G's. There is a difference. Next assassin, Vendettas, right away, puts it right back on the Queen of Pain, the man to burn, and he just goes down to Nature's Prophet Ultimate. Meanwhile, Saf, taking the dust, and they're gonna be able to go down the splitter, keeping him in place long enough for the auto attacks to fly in. If ever there was a puppy pause, that would be it. Four heroes rotating in. The Diabolic Edict is on cooldown, though, which means this tower isn't gonna go down. My stats man is checking out if the lag is really there or not. If it is, then, well, we just feel bad for all these players. It looks like Warflick coming in behind, but the Telekinesis is keeping them off just a little bit longer. The tower does fall, though. And Rubik trying to get himself out of there. The waveform being used, but unfortunately, he's not able to do much of the vacuum. Pulling them all together, but the uh, Darkseer is the next to take the aggression. Weaver isn't able to put enough damage on him. He is going to get away. That's 21 seconds down. Out on the uh, the Rubik. As they push to defend, to take out this tier 2 tower. Meanwhile, all sorts of TP support are coming in. Bounty Hunter trying to find out the uh, the Nature's Prophet. The TP block, the Scream of Pain, pick him up, put him down. Scream at him a little bit. And the stun coming out from the Morphling. Does he know he can waveform away from that? Doesn't matter right now. As the Morphling, well, he does end up waveforming. And waveforms right down Jonah. Putting on his ion shell, backing him right back onto the lowdown. Birkendog trying what he can. The Split Earth does connect onto the Queen of Pain, but it's only Bert de delaying the inevitable. As the Morphling taking a lot of damage, wait for him though. As the Screen of Pain comes out, he's gonna get away. No, he's not. He is end up gonna end up falling, and that was a track. Two tracks, two kills, and Pro Pain honestly coming out on top in that engagement. And Fiend sitting four and zero in this game. His net worth through the roof and right now I'm scared for Big Meat Squad as they're gonna have to face the big man in every single one of these team fights and I'm not sure if they can even put a scratch on him Courier coming in what's that that's half of his uh or more than half rather of his assault cuirass which is gonna make him even harder to take down these fights Struz are doing what he can pushing in the top lane mid tower going down the mid time Saf trying to do what he can Trying to get away, the stun isn't going to come out on him, isn't going to cancel the TP. Hank Hill, a little out ahead, he's going to try to ward up. Doesn't have, yep he does have ward, so. Catches out an illusion rune. Bounty Hunter, looking for that nature's prophet, but he does end up TPing out. Aggression, and on the mid lane. Pushing it out just a little bit. Rubik's uh, illusion being spotted out. I'm not sure if they actually think that's the real one. No, they know it's not the real one. They send Lashrak in, just push some damage out. Nothing real big. Meanwhile, Roshan sitting loud and strong here. Large and strong. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Propane take a fight and then take Roshan. But for right now, they're trying to keep all the waves pushed out despite the Nature's Prophet doing a very good job at keeping the waves pushed in. When we look at net worth, the Nature's Prophet is sitting, well actually, is actually quite low on the net worth. In fact, almost all of Propane is at top. The big meat squad. And the smoke up, they're looking to put some aggression on. Burritos leading the charge with Vendetta, but there's only two heroes getting this gank squad. Not sure what they can do. He's not going to find him anyone. If he were to walk forward a little bit, he'd find Queen of Pain. Saf getting caught out. Rather, Struzor getting caught out. Saf launching a uh, track out on the Weaver here. Does have time lapse, but time lapsing just to get rid of a uh, track. Usually not beneficial unless you're in the middle of team fight. Stun being charged up. Does fly out. Struzor not able to time lapse away from it. Probably won't be able to get the time lapse off. The track kill ends up going the way. Fiend. Sitting 5-0, and oh, and that's his Assault Cuirass coming in on the Courier right now, and they're going to go ahead and put some aggression on this tower. With the minus 5 armor, it's going to fall rather quickly. Just look at the damage out. Veen, with a level 2 ultimate, is already attacking rather fast for a hero. 
of his uh, his size. Morphling, do what he can to twist in the mid lane, but all in all, they gotta really get these uh, split pushes going and going strong. The track out on Big At. It doesn't look like the Nature's Prophet anywhere near a point to uh, kill him. And looks like Queen of Pain trying to get some aggression out on Big At. Does waveform out the uh, the Shadow Poison here. Shadow Strike, rather. And the Morphling gonna back away. Elite. Keeping the keeping the pressure on the lanes. Trying to get some counter push out, but without a hero like uh like Keeper of the Light, counter pushes can get rather difficult. I mean he does have his uh lightning. But unfortunately that has no levels in it, and so it can't be really be used for split push. Morphling with his waveform is arguably a good split push, but Waveform costing 165 mana is a very costly split push if out anything. With the regeneration rune and the top lane, it looks like uh, propane trying to bait out the uh, enemy team to come and get it, but they're gonna go ahead and just take it. And we see another pause coming out from the Weaver this time. Unsure of what it really is. Bounty Hunter sitting at 1k ping. So to remember, to everyone on my stream, there is a two minute delay. So everything you're seeing happens two minutes after by request of the Red at Dota 2 League. All in all, it's 15 and 10 at 25 minutes and we look at the gold next P graphs and very scary if you're a big meat squad fan here as propane and gold is 10k up meanwhile and xp is 7.5k and that's not a deficit that you want to be at especially when you have a snowballing lineup that involves a morphling and a weaver against a late game lineup of the uh of the alchemist the g's fly for the third time bounty hunter looks to be going for his desolator to make those pushes even faster and is actually spots out the courier, but is definitely not going to get there in time. He pops his phase boots. Will he get there in time? No, he won't. Courier lives for another day. Meanwhile, Nature's Prophet. The stun is going to fly. The Orchid making sure he can't TP out. And they probably should have waited for the track out. No, they get the track on the less rack. The Shuriken to fly, but nothing really, no real backup. And there's three heroes, the masked up top. They're gonna find uh, the Nyx Assassin. The track out, pops his Spike Carapace. They're waiting for the Spike Carapace to end. They do get the stun out. He's gonna fall. Wicked six free for the Alchemist. Jonah trying to vacuum up onto the high ground. A little bit of a cheeky maneuver, but not amounting to anything. That Birkin Dog taking out the Leshrac. Pings out. They find the Haste Rune, and they're gonna back off for now. Four, three heroes down on the side of Big Me Squad. They're gonna push into the mid lane, and they're gonna go ahead and try to take out another tower. Ion Shell to help the Fiend push a little bit more. The Orchid, out on the Morphling. The stun being charged up. Can this make this five kills? Yes! Monster kill out on Fiend. And this is most certainly gonna turn into a tower. Meanwhile, Nature's Prophet in the top lane, gonna try to split push it up. But all in all, his pushing power is nowhere near that of propane. And right now they can try to push onto the high ground and maybe make a rax out of this. Morphling down for another 22 seconds. No, they turn around. Might as well go for Roshan. The TP out from the uh from the Darkseer to counter push out the Nature's Prophet. In fact, he's gonna go ahead and chase him down. Put in some damage on Nature's Prophet. Four stabbing into the trees and is gonna get away. Radiance top tower is under attack. Looks like Darkseer using a wall, thinking that he can pick it up, but Nature's Prophet has a TP. What are you thinking? Either way, alone in the top lane. Meanwhile, the two big guys duke it out. Leshrac waiting on the high ground. Weaver waiting to go in. Not sure what they're expecting. Birkendog taking an impale to the face. Meanwhile, Roshan does fall. And that's an Aegis on Alchemist. Who's sitting on 4,900 gold. 
It's up to, uh, it's only a speculation what he's going to buy next. But I imagine it's going to be something that boosts his damage. Because right now, he's attacking like a monster. He's going to charge up his stun. Won't be able to catch the Nature's Prophet in time. Instead, might get the Weaver if they find him. No! He's going to end up stunning himself, but to no real avail. Saf getting caught out. The Telekinesis. There isn't another stun on the Alchemist just yet. He doesn't charge it up. The Weaver ends up falling really fast. And the, dar the Bounty Hunter doing great work in these fights, keeping his gold flying. And the Alchemist sitting at 5,200 gold. What's he going to buy? He has a spot in his inventory. Doesn't look to be picking up anything just yet. In fact, charge is done. Nature's Prophet knowing something's up, but it's not enough. He's going to get stunned up. Full duration. And just take a few hits to fall. Darkseer taking the kill, but all in all, not really too much of a problem. It's an issue when even your nature's prophet can't split push. And he's just gonna sit on his trust fund. He's got enough money. Well, to. <laughs> I mean, he doesn't even need to transform that mountain into a goal, his, a goal according to his lore. He can just, you know, buy a mountain. I don't know if that makes any sense to people who don't know the lore. In fact, I'm not even sure that was a joke. I don't. I didn't quite think that went through, but anyway. Morphling, finding out hand kill, doing plenty of damage with his, uh... God, his waveform. Come on. I got my mind all frazzled now, but anyway. He does pick up the adaptive strike, but unfortunately... The split earth does land and he ends up falling. Meanwhile, TP's up to the top lane. There's a four man push here. Three man push. They're looking to take uh take the tier three two and they end up getting it. Trying to catch the uh, dire team at the rune. The courier is spotted out! The Weaver gets the Gemini proc and is able to pick up the courier. Meanwhile, Birkendog pops the uh, invisibility rune, and they're able to pick up the uh, next assassin. I'm Almost sorry. no, no sorry? real um, effort spent on that kill, but it was a track, and therefore it was a lot of gold. Alchemist, 3,800 gold. He does pick up a basher. And he can easily, he can just turn that right into an abyssal blade right now. Meanwhile. Nature's Prophet <laughs> realizes that he can't split push too effectively and ends up pushing a little bit and then backing out, which is perfectly smart. You don't want to feed anymore. He doesn't have too many items right now, and he really has to start picking up items like his sheep, sticker, and orchid to keep that, uh, keep that alchemist under control. Unfortunately, the alchemist isn't the only thing you need to worry about anymore. Because right now, the bounty hunter is pretty scary and the queen of pain is pretty scary. Speaking of pretty scary, the Queen of Pain, almost at her Scythe of Ice. Four heroes, five heroes pushing in the mid lane. Bounty Hunter is in there, we see the blink up. Queen of Pain trying to do a little a bit of initiating. Isn't able to get it off quite yet, Nature's Prophet pushing the mid bottom lane. But there is a faster push out on Pro Pain. Are they willing to try to break the high ground though? It looks like they're rather cautious. They don't want to push it too bad. But right now, you've got Nature's Prophet, and he knows all five of them are here. And then the, there they go. They're up under the high ground. Rubek picks up the Scoochie, and the uh, Telekinesis is out on the, uh, on the Alchemist Illusion. Fiend taking a lot of damage, does still have Aegis, and has it for another minute or so. Big At taking lots of damage and falls, godlike, on Fiend. And he's just going to sit around, start whacking at things, doing plenty of damage to stun, going to fly. And the target's going to be the next assassin, but there is a spike carapace. Scruzor taking a lot of damage. And one Janata Brock from the Bounty Hunter is able to seal the deal. Buyback on the uh, on the Nature's Prophet, but there's two alive. The Fountain Dive, Birkendog takes a lot of damage, triple kill, killing inside the base, and he's going to get away. Meanwhile, Midrax taking a fall. The Eclipse is being spent. There's two heroes to defend. And Fiend throwing out a stun. Doesn't the um the waveform isn't quite on time. 
and he's able to uh, he able gets it off right on the back foot. Right now, gold next P graphs soaring for propane. Net worth. <laughs> Alchemist doubling the top. Next highest. Next highest is on his own team. And they're gonna go ahead and take two sets of rack. They don't have to leave. They don't have to leave. They take out the Morphling. Rather soon though, the Morphling's still alive. The Orchid though, he does get his, uh, his Morph. Owl in strength, he's still alive, but he doesn't end up falling. Double kill. Owl and the Alchemist. He's taking a lot of damage. Still hasn't brought the, uh, his Aegis. But he picks up a Rampage. And that's the GG's being called. Fiend. An absolute monster in this game, sitting 14 and 0. His net worth through the roof. And the Ancient falls. Guys, this has been Chicago Ted casting with Statsman Sir Rabbit Koala. Until next time, happy Dota.